I'm Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we are happy to welcome Sue Aikens, star of Life Below Zero on National Geographic. Um, so you have been sharing your life in Alaska with the viewers for an entire decade now. What is it about the show that keeps you coming back year after year? Um, oh, well, depending on how you look at that, you know, keeps me coming back year after year while I'm still alive. I'm still here. They filmed my life. So um, by virtue of that, I'm going to be here as long as I can. Why people keep tuning in. Um, I think maybe there's a dynamic there. Um, people have their own lives. They have their own routines. They live by the laws. There's a very social structure. And then all of a sudden, here comes this wild child that when we started, I smoked stogies, lots of cigarettes. You know, when they asked me about being on the show, I'm like, hey, I, I wear 501s, V-neck T-shirts. I swear a lot. You know, and I kick things. Don't try to change me. That won't work out good for either of us. But it's uh, like people that romanticize the the Wild West. There's something about, holy cow, did you see what she did? Oh, my gosh, her butt grew the size of Texas this year. Will she lose the weight? Won't she? It's It's touching something that people want to do. There's not that much wild wilderness left. And here comes a grandma that just won't stop. But there's variety. Um, there are several of us. And uh, even for myself, if I stop this long enough to use this and this, I learn something from everybody. So, and you can apply it however you want. I spew little tidbits of my personal wisdom all of the time um, because that's how I think. And I think in a very social set, set parameter world, that's so far outside the box, it has to be appealing. I saw a photo of you holding a gun in one hand and an Emmy award in the other hand. I'm like, <laughs> yes. I love this photo. Um, it, I just want to tell people at home, this show has won seven Emmys through the yes. year, including two last year. You're still winning trophies. What does it mean to be part of a show that has this huge viewer base and the the TV Academy wins as well. Um, my portion of the show again is um, it's just my life. Follow me. Don't um, I don't slow down a whole lot unless I break myself and then I'll probably drag the part behind me as I go. And the awards really touch. the men, the women, the background people you never see, it takes more than a village of these people to create what you're seeing. Uh, the cameramen, they've, there's only four people on a crew. They're trying not to crowd us out. Um, you know, they've been asked several times, what's the most dangerous creature you've come across? You know, is it bears? And I'm like, dude, it's us. We're all we're out there because we're not all there. You don't know. We don't even know what our triggers are, or, you know, and, and uh, you may overstep some boundary. And suddenly it's not the bear where after I turn and I'm like, what? And but they deal with it with such grace. We've learned together over a decade. I've seen some of these people meet their mates, get married, have kids become fur moms and dads, buy homes, and there's a familiarity there. Mm -hmm. And that's breeding this whole, I think it's a direction we're taking where you're, you're getting a deeper level of who we are. You know, at first it's just, you know, smoking the stogie, spitting, kicking something. If that doesn't work, bust out the sledgehammer. Um, and now you almost become friends with these people and you care about the people watching. And there's this symbiotic relationship that's developing. The awards, Susan personally doesn't get to take one home and, and stick it on the shelf. Although they sent one said, can we get a picture with you holding it? And I'm like, yeah, you know, and I put the pistol up and everything. <laughs> but it recognizes these people. There's 100 to 200 hours of film per episode that gets cut down to 12 to 15 minutes. 
and yet still tells the story. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of magic. And this season, one of the storylines was um, Cluck University. You built it. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. My cousins have chickens and it made me think of home. Um, did you, did they ever start making eggs? Cause I, I, I don't Oh know. yeah. I'm getting three dozen eggs a day now. Um, I had to incorporate uh, two gentlemen into the herd um, because they, I just do. Um, mm. It's supposed to be for me, and it is a, a food source. Um, since COVID and during, Alaska depends so greatly on flying things in, trucking them in, barging them in, and suddenly everything dried up. Mm. Now, I can't go hunt and feed clients. In order for me to be on the North Slope, there's the camp. I have to have clients. You don't see many of them. They're there for their own reasons and they're not here wanting cameras up, you know, their, their grill. But the chickens are another food source. Well, it's going to be a very finite food source if I don't get a couple new layers every so often, or maybe there's one hen that says I can't do it anymore. And I'm like, that's okay. Chicken and dumplings. We'll just get you taken care of. <laughs> but no, they, I've got two gentlemen and uh, the little brown chickens that are supposed to be so great. They're from Canada and they are. I haven't lost any yet. And we got down to 84 below zero and then went colder. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been a challenge to keep them warm. I had to move them one time because I just couldn't keep their tents warm. Um, but so far, the, the foxes are more interested in ptarmigan than chickens. And, uh, but yeah, cluck you, they had to smarten up real quick. <laughs> in, in this season, you said a quote, I don't think I'd be happy living a lifestyle where it was all too easy. Why do you, why do you want the hunt? Why do you want the resourcefulness? It, it just seems like so much work to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it is, but, um, I really, it's part of my nature. Uh, I think in pictures, I think in photographs, if I can't take a situation and make a complete photograph out of it, um, I, I just have, it's like falling into the black hole. Um, I'm challenge driven. If you tell me I, and none of my spouses figured this out, you know, um, I couldn't believe that, but, uh, Sorry, somebody's opening a garage door and I'm hearing it. Um, I'm challenge driven. Anything that's too easy, if it's handed to you, there's no challenge. There's no, there's no fight for it. There's no, it's like a fish. Why do they pull on the reel instead of saying, you got me, just eat me. It's mm. in their nature. And I, there's another situation that happens. Uh, you won't see it till the next season, but it's, it gets really actually pretty dicey and dangerous. And I have to figure a situation out. And I go back to saying, you know, humans supposedly are reasoning creatures. We're supposed to be able to reason right from wrong, good from bad, we, but we have a thought process. Animals are instinctual. Don't put a human emotion onto a bear. They're not looking at you going, mm, a little more padding. I'll be back in a month. Wait till you have the crew with you. Um, and maybe over all of the years and, and my unique upbringing, there's a little more instinct than there is the reasoning. If you hit my switches, if you flip my triggers, like I said, then it's like, oh, really? Game on. Run. Well, Sue, it's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> talking to you today. Thank you so much. And we will oh, thank see you. you in a little bit in the big group panel coming up. Thank you so much.